So let's we start. What is the research, and then gradually we can understand what are the objective you would be requiring, and then after that we will talk about the what are the statistical method is available, but how you can go for the data analysis. So research is uh, nothing but it is a process activity problem systematically. So it's basically uh, you can just. Uh, you can have a lot of the research plan. You may be going for uh, data analysis. You will going for uh, field work. You will go for the experiment. So you will be doing a lot of the analysis for uh, for your objectives. Okay. So research is nothing but it is a process activity and problem solving uh, way. And uh, how you can define the research. So that you need to uh, learn from here. Hello. Okay, so uh, so how you can define the research? So research is a process wherein the activities are carried out systematically to find out the solution of a problem. So basically, we will have a lot of the problem during the uh, my research work. Either you will do a project or you will do a PhD. Then you will uh, have uh, some problem, and then you will would be getting us some solution of those problems. So this is can be done with the help of the some process and where you will uh, you would like to look up the some of the activities activities for like review of literatures like a research design methodology sample size estimations then you will talk about the uh, data collections the data analysis and then after finally you will be writing your thesis writing your reports or writing your research papers, okay? So this is the, uh, you need to follow these uh, steps uh, during the research. So the identification of the problem and uh, what are the steps you would have to So uh, these are the identification of the problem, then uh, formulation of the hypothesis, data collection and data analysis. So this, uh, uh, what you can uh, thought of while you are going for uh, uh, going for any research, then you will be having the identification of the problem. So first you need to identify what kind of the problem you would be addressing in your research. Okay, so you will be addressing uh, some problem or you will not be addressing some problem that you need to look up. So then after that, you will, if you will have set of three objectives or set of two objectives, then after that, you will trying to, uh, trying to write the formulation of the hypothesis. Okay, so in the formulation of the hypothesis, you need to write, uh, write about the, what are the hypothesis. So this hypothesis means that statistical hypothesis. Okay, so uh, you need to look up the statistical hypothesis and then after that, you will trying to uh, uh, go for uh, data collection. Then after that, data analysis. So here we will be seeing that what kind of the data analysis you can go with, uh, with whatever the objective is with you. Okay, so that's you need to. Uh, so basically, I'm trying to just um, more focus on the identification and formulation of the research problem. So as much as you are clear about the, your problems, that means you are clear about the how you can bring out the data and how you can do an analysis. So more part is involved on the what kind of the objective is with you, what kind of the problem is with you. So how you can identify these, uh, these research problems. So you can see that selection of a research, uh, research area, then you will talk about the, uh, you will find out that I would like to go in public health, I will guide. In public health, I will be going for the in diabetic diabetic uh, studies. 
Okay, so in that area, I would like to go for review of the literatures and the theory. So I will go for what work is already done and what theory is saying. Okay, so that's need to be look up. And after that, I will be noting all those points which is coming from the literature and theories and focusing the research topic. So whatever is my topic, and then accordingly, I can bring out this can be a, my objective. Evaluating the research problem. So what is the meaning of evaluate? Whatever I wrote. So this is the, my, uh, this could be a, my first objective, second, third, and fourth. Then really, I need to see is really doable. It's really collectible. It is really analyzable. So I need to always uh, think on all those points. And then after that, I will go for the formulation of final statement of the research problem. So, and then after that, I'm clear that much. It is doable, it is analyzable, it is collectible. Then after that, I will be writing that these are the my objectives, okay? So these are the my problems. So in uh, in the in this line, we will we will must talk about the research process. So research process, uh, which will begin with the define the research problem as we already discussed, res review concept and the theories and review research findings. And then after that, we need to formulate your hypothesis. So hypothesis means whatever the, you will get uh, statistical answers, that means you need to have some hypothesis. Then you will talk about the design research, including the samples designs, and then you will go for the collection of the data. So, and then after that, you will go for the analysis of the, your hypothesis. And hypothesis means whatever you formulated. Okay, so earlier you formulated the hypothesis, and now you will be uh, testing all those hypotheses. Now, after that, you will go for the interpretation and the reports. So uh, after this, this is the, my uh, next slide where you need to have a look on the statistical package. So what are the statistical packages available? So there are the many software uh, available about the statistics. So that is called the STATA, R, SPSS, FEINFO, and a um, lot of the other software is available, but you will see that I think the SPSS, Excel, and the R is a very commonly software which you are trying to use, okay? Or maybe some of you are already expert in those uh, softwares. And some are the qualitative software as well. So you will have the qualitative software like Atlas TI and others that you can uh, see. So basically, uh, what is the purpose of uh, telling you this about the software? Uh, so this software is uh, basically, needs to be uh, used for the analysis purpose. So whatever you feel comfortable that you can opt for the, your analysis purpose. Okay, so after this, this is the another important part. So what is, so far we talk about the, these are the my hypothesis or these are the my objectives, research problem. So this research problem must uh, go for, uh, means you will, you will have a such sort of some question which you will be asking in a field or in an experiment. Okay, so might be, so this questions is very important. So let's say you would be asking that if you are doing the diabetic study, so are you uh, are you a diabetic patient or not? Okay, so what is your H SBA1C? What is the value of that one? So you get to know what, uh, how much time is having that value. So it's a higher value or lower value. So every question must have some, data measurement or scale measurements, okay? So you must know what is that. So let's we talk about the classification of the measurement of the scale. So that is the, how you can understand the types of the data in, uh, in your research, okay? So, uh, so here I will start with the nominal. So nominal is nothing but it is a just classification by the definition. It is a classification, but no order, distance, and origins. And uh, in this nominal data, we will talk about the just two things, male and females. Okay, so if it is, we are asking about the genders. So uh, if it is, I'm asking the, are you diabetic or not? So you will get the answer yes and no, okay? And don't know. So these are the, your nominal kind of the data. So basically what it's doing, it's just classifying the things, okay? 
so it is classified as a male female and uh, um, don't know okay so this is the classification what is the original data original data is by the definition it is a classification order is there but no distance and origin would, would be there so this is the ordinal data. So for an example, we will talk about the first division, second, third, and fourth division. So this is the in hierarchy, okay? So it's either a very high or very low, okay? So if it is such kind of the data observation is coming out from the field, that means that it is an ordinal data, okay? So for an example, how, what kind of the uh, pain you will get in during the diabetic, uh, diabetic, okay? So you will say that hey, I'm mild, moderate, and severe. So, so this is the mild, moderate, and severe are the nothing, but it is the rating skills, or this is the ordinal data, okay? So whatever the feedback you will give for this training program, whatever feedback you will go in flight, in train, in bus, and restaurant. So these all are your, uh, your um, rating skills, okay? So you will say that fully satisfied, satisfied, not neutral, not satisfied, not fully satisfied. So this will come into the ordinal. Interval is classification, order, and distance, but there is no origin, okay? So here uh, you will talk about the, uh, there is a, a real line. So you can take any, any value for your, uh, your respondent. For an exam example, if it is I'm asking the age of the patients, okay, so what is the age of the, my patients? So age can be lies between uh, rough, uh, in uh, 0 to 100, let's say, okay. So uh, my patient can come anyone. So it's 30 years old, 40 years old, 40.5 years old. So this will come into the your interval data. Ratio is uh, by the definitions, classification, order, distance, and natural origin. So it's talk about the, what is uh, basically the, uh, the class, you can do the classification, you can do the ordering, you can do a distance and natural origin. So here, all kind of the data, this is the very important data for the analysis purpose. So here you can, uh, you can go for the, go for uh, a major analysis, you can perform over the ratio and interval data. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, a lot of the time we will talk about the what is your uh, hemoglobin level, what is your blood pressure, what is your diabetic value, what is your HbA1c, how much money you spend, or uh, okay, how much you dis, uh, travel, uh, how many uh, hours you travel. So these all kind of the data will come into the interval and ratio. So next question is come to you. If it is you have you know that. This is the my research problems, and certainly you will have a certain questions which uh, you will be putting forward for the data collections, and then you will come up for, from the data collections or from the experiment or from the fields. Then after that, you did a data entry. Now next step is that how what analysis strategy is required. So now again, this question is for you. So how you can do the analysis of your data? That's the question is in front of you people. So, okay, so you need how you can analyze your data. So that's you either you will go for uh, descriptive statistics, you can go frequency, you can go for graph, t-test, chi-square, ANOVA, non-parametric, parametric. So how, what is, uh, is the way, okay? So analysis of a strategy means if it is any data is coming to be uh, uh, from the secondary sources, primary sources, whatever it is. But initially you need to start with the very scratch means how it, it is look like, okay? So if it is any person is coming to your house, so you just see how it is look like that person, okay? And so then after that, you will think of, Are, this, this is my uh, younger brother, his elder brother, or is it is my neighbor and like that, okay? Similarly, in the analysis strategy, you just look up the data, okay? So by, by your visualization, you can just see how data is look like. And after that, you will go for the descriptive statistics, okay? So you will, go, you will get to know what is your dis, uh, descriptive statistics, which describe your data. So describe your data in the sense of uh, how you can understand your uh, data that you can describe means uh, is how many subjects are there, what is the average value, what is the standard deviations, what is the minimum maximum value. So that's you need to do a analysis study, the initial one, okay? After that, you can cut off the some other kind of the analysis. So uh, 
now we will talk about the uh, analysis strategy by by some points by okay so we will talk about the descriptions descriptions or just understanding of your data so that can be done with the descriptive statistical summary okay so if you will have categorical data then you can go for the nn percentage or if you will have continuous data then you can go for mean median mode and uh, standard deviations so this is you do you doing basically a descriptive statistics okay next step that exploration so you can take a combinations of the uh, two or more than two variables okay so you can take the two variables or more than two variables and then you will see the what is the cross tabulation so how these values are uh, lying to each other okay so that you can do with the cross tabulations and then after that discovering the differences so you would like to see the certain values you are collected and is really these are value are uh, same or differ that you would like to do so this is come under the hypothesis testing okay so hypothesis testing uh, can be uh, uh, can be done based on the differences so what is differences is lying between the uh, these have uh, these two values or these two groups so that you can do with the help of the hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is a basically is a is is a one of the another subject where you can understand the how you can do the testing of your your data so here you want to compare the mean value you want to compare the more than two value three value so that you can do in hypothesis testing okay then after that you will come up on the uh, finding the relationship so you have the two variables and then you would like to see uh, is there any correlation between these two variable or not or how it is uh, what kind of the correlation is exist between them so you you will talk about the measure of association okay so this is the measure of association and after that you will talk about the regression analysis okay so a lot of the regression modeling you can do for finding the relationship between your data and you will see that which relationship uh, means the independent variable is causing the dependent variable so that you would like to find out so uh, after this uh, the next slide is the again on the research strategies so here you will talk about the main emphasis on the qualitative and quantitative research strategies so if you will have qualitative that means you will be going for uh, so you will be going for the text analysis or image analysis and then thematic analysis and content analysis so here basically you just having the words okay and theory building so it is the the qualitative one if you will talk about the quantitative means you will get number and theory for testing structures questions would be there generalizations hard to reliable data so here you will do the descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so uh, here i will be also talking on the what do you understand the one sample t test then two sample t test and uh, then after that we will talk about the in prt test and analysis of variance so this is the another uh, uh, classifications which you need to understand so discrete variables and continuous outcome variables so basically discrete variables means you will have uh, basically what you call um, nominal and ordinal data then you will talk about this is a my discrete uh, outcome variables and continuous are the your uh, ratio and inter interval kind of the data so if you will have the discrete outcome means nominal or ordinal data then what kind of the statistical test or method you can apply so here you can go for the chi square test fisher regress test and logistic regression and survival analysis okay in the other side you will go for the t test prt test then analysis of variance analysis of covariance linear regression simple multiple and step wise then wilcoxon rank sum test wilcoxon sign rank test these are the non parametric methods and correlation and regression so this is uh, used for the continuous outcome variables okay so this is give you then idea if you will have this kind of the data this kind of the objectives then you can prove with these statistical techniques 
so that you can uh, learn from here. Again, after this, uh, I'm trying to explain you the parametric and non-parametric method. So parametric is those uh, every, so in the statistics, what will happen, uh, every test must be looking for some assumptions. So assumption means it is normally distributed or not. That's, uh, uh, that's trying to understand from, um, from the parametric method. So, so in the parametric method, so if it is your distribution is normally distributed, so if you will get the normal distribution of your data, that means it is a parametric. If it is your equality of the variance of the two samples or more than two samples, then you will say that it is a my parametric parametric um, test. Okay, so if you will have this uh, characteristics of your data, then you can go for the parametric methods. If you don't have the this, your, you will get the skewed data, not normal data, or not equality of the variance. That means you will go for the non-parametric method. So it is the x is equals to two. So what is the meaning of x is equals to two? So it means that you will have two samples, means x is equals to two. If you have x greater than two, means you will have more than two samples. Then accordingly, you can go for the uh, the corresponding methods. So you will you will talk about the uh, x is equals to two, and that y is normal. So it means it's follow the parametric property. And here, if it is your samples are unrelated, then you will go for the student t-test. If it is your sample are related, then you will go for the peer t-test. And if it is on the other sides, the, uh, if they are unrelated and related, then it is the Wilcoxon rank sum you can use and uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test can be used. If it is this is x greater than two and y is normal, then you can go for the unrelated. Here you can go for one-way analysis of variance and repeated sample is there. Then repeated measure of analysis of variance you can go. So this is the Kruskal Valley and this is your Friedman test with respect to non-parametric methods. So let's we will uh, also talk about the some more test that is the chi-square test. So chi-square is more widely used in uh, categorical data in nominal or ordinal data. It's uh, non-parametric methods, so it's widely used. It's used by the commonly by the social scientists, and even for uh, from the social uh, science scientists. So this is most widely used uh, non-parametric methods, useful in the tests involving the nominal data, but can be used for the higher scales. And typical cases are here where the persons, events, or objects are grouped into the two or more nominal categories or the classes. So family of regression analysis. So what level of the data is that uh, is the dependent variable? So that's you. So in the family of regression, so in the regression analysis, you will find that a lot of the modeling can be done. So. So modeling, you can say that more than 40 tests is available, okay? So for an example, logistic is there, multivariate is there, uh, single regression, multiple regression, multivariate regression, time count regression, box regression is there. So a lot of the method is available, but how you can decide which method is useful, okay? So this is depend on the, what is your dependent variable and what is the characteristics of the de that dependent variables, okay? So based on that characteristics, you can decide about that, which kind of the regression method you can use in your, uh, your data. So dependent variable has two label, okay? So it's a yes, no kind of the data. If you will say that, the patient is absent or present, so that you can go for the logistic regression. If dependent variable has three or more labels, then you can go for the multinomial logistic regressions, okay? And if you will have your dependent variable is ordinal dependent variables, ordinal dependent variables. So in the order is there, so you can go for the ordinal logistic regression. If uh, your dependent variable is interval, Okay, so if it is that is interval, then you will go for the multiple regressions or uh, single regression or multiple regressions. So here to apply the regression, multiple regression or single regression, then you need to 
you need to check the some kind of the assumption. Okay, so test for linearity, uh, linear, uh, linearity assumptions, you need to check. You will check the normality of the independent variables and you will talk about the homocytosity. And if it is that is met, if it is yet these assumptions are fulfilled, that means you can go for the linear and multiple regressions. So basically, similarly, based on the your, uh, 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 you, you will be just seeing that um, if you will have the data, uh, you will have the dependent variables characteristics, then you can able to decide about your, your data. So now we will start with the uh, another uh, analysis of continuous data that is normally distributed parametric methods. So we will start with the one sample t test. So in the one sample t test, we have only the one set. So for example, uh, we just would like to consider only one university to, to look up the IQ level, okay, IQ level of the students. Or let's say I just want to see up the, what is the H1A1C value of the students. So one dependent, independent samples and comparison between one group of the subjects, okay? So com, uh, compare mean responses from one treatment group to the some existing value of the hypothetical value. So this is the H0 to H1 and mu is equals to 105 and mu not equals to 105. So you can use the T, uh, T is equals to X bar minus mu as by root n. So this you can use for the one sample t test. So basically what you want to see that is this mu value or this sample value is same as the some hypothetical value. So it is 105 or not that you would like to test in the one sample t test. So what do you understand by the uh, t test, two sample t test? So in the t test, two independent samples are there. So comparison between the different uh, group of groups of the subjects. So in the group of the subjects, you compare the mean response from the two treatments groups. So you would like to compare. So there are the two samples are there that in that cases, you will be using the t-test. Okay, so basically here you comparing the mean value of the one samples is same as the other or they are different. So that you will doing the in t-test. What is a pair t-test? So where one sample with related value, okay? So uh, uh, before and after kind of the data is, is with you and it is the pre and post kind of the data is with you, then you would like to go for the pair t test, okay? So here the blood pressure change from the baseline that you would like to go or marks often before and after the class taken by the ICT tools that you can do, okay? So this is the pair t test you can use. So for an example, if it is uh, you, you people are joining this course. So let's, we will start with the, some, uh, some your, to know your no, knowledge about the research methodology and data analysis. So we conduct a test for you. And then after that, after the seven days, again, we are just asking the another exams to know that what is your knowledge about the, the statistics and data analysis, okay? So if you will uh, doing this one, then you can say that it is the, the, the it, in this case, you would like to apply the pair t test. So what is a student t test? Uh, here t test is comparing the mean from the two different group of the subject is computed as the mean of one sample minus of mean of the other samples divided by the their variability. So that you can do in a uh, student t test. So is the difference is significantly different from zero when compared to the variable so, so So basically this is the formula of how to calculate the t value. And it is nothing but it's the mean of one sample, mean of second sample and their variable t. That you can find out with the help of the student t test. So again, I'm again telling you, so every test must looking for some assumption about the, your data. So what kind of the assumption you will be looking up in the uh, t-test, that is the samples are independent, the bell-shaped distribution like a normal distributions, and the bell-shaped curve is centers around zero, and the tails are slightly thicker than the standard normal bell curve. So when the sample size exceeds 30, the t-distributions uh, t will 
be the same as this normal distribution okay so this is the assumption for uh, t test and how it will look like so it's uh, basically you can see that this is the t distributions and these are this is the reason of do not reject the h not so basically what we are trying to prove here so h not is rejected or h not is not rejected okay so that's we uh, wanted to know from these t t uh, tests so this is the distribution this is the region where you will say that do not reject h not if it is this coming the value uh, over here after the, after the observed p statistics value then p value is reject h not and these are the regions okay so if it is this is coming then you will rejecting h not and this is the way how you can work for the 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 testing of the hypothesis for the comparing the two mean values so student t test is the differences larger than the expected by chance then uh, we observe that student t, uh, t statistics is whatever we calculated t statistics is so large in magnitude that means fall outside of the regions marked by the two critical points so we conclude that the observed difference is larger than the expected by chance okay so it means that there is a uh, there is an alpha is equals to 5% chance that we made a wrong conclusion okay so this is the one way you can understand that about the t test so this marks of the one student is there marks of the other students is there that is the marks one and marks two and you will get what is the number of observations what is the mean value what is the standard deviations then after that you can also do a t test analysis so this can be done in a excel in a spss or you can also calculate manually as well so all the option is available for you so compare the mean using the spss so you can go for the analyze compare means then you will go for the pair t test then you will go for the uh, one way analysis of variance independent sample t test so that you can also go for the in spss after this we will uh, we will trying to understand what is the analysis of variance okay so analysis of variance is uh, is once we will have more than two samples so one sample is there two sample is there and three sample is there then in that case we will be going for analysis of variance so we wants to compare the is there any change in the mean value of more than three sample or not okay or more than two samples or not so when uh, when we want to make this statistical inference about a set of uh, set of mean from more than two treatment groups okay so although more than two treatment means are compares the procedure is are called as the analysis of variance okay so the total variability in the data is uh, partitions to test the differences among the means so now you will see that how you can betterly understand the analysis of variance so it is also co called as the one way anova overall of test so here uh, basically what we are doing compare the sample variability between the groups with the sample variability within the groups okay so the test statistics again the same so uh, in the uh, numerator you will talk about the differences in the mean value and this is the variability in the differences so this will give you the f statistics in the anova we will be using the f distributions so we will be calculating the f statistics and this is the basically what we would like to see so there are the three things 0 mg and 10 mg and 30 mg doses so we would like to see is there are the three doses uh, sizes is there and this is your mean response value so how the each value is far away from this mean value so that we would like to see with the help of uh, help of the analysis of variance so what is the model in this case so model is nothing but it is the y i j is equals to mu i plus uh, summation i j so what is the y is your response variable of the subject and treatment groups and then after that we will talk about the mean response of the i treatment groups that is uh, and then after that the random error associated with the the, the j subject with the i treatment group 
so this is the the uh, this is often referred to as the parametric assumptions and sigma ij's are the independent and sigma i j are normally distributed with mean zero and equal variance sigma square for each group okay so this is the this is the the assumption so whatever the assumption you you heard in the t test that's also uh, applicable here in analysis of variance so uh, if let's say we are comparing the three treatment means so let's say we are giving the three diabetic value to the, to the three group of the peoples and we would like to, we would like to see that how much the change in the h HbA1c value, or you can say that what is the fasting value is changed. Okay, <coughs> so that's we would like to do here. So what is your null hypothesis? H naught is all mu i's are equals. Means all mu one of one uh, one samples is same as the other, and and, uh, and that is same as to third one as well. So an alternative hypothesis is at least one is mu i is different from the others that you will be using the alternative. So here you will be use the test statistic F, F distribution. We can obtain the p-value. That is your group probability value. Observing the test statistics as an extreme, as the observed value by the chance. So H naught is nothing but all mu i's are equal. So means more or less they are equal and means are not equal so that is like this so how you can make the decision so if p value is less than 0 0.05 that means reject h naught if p value is greater than 0 0.05 that means fail to reject your h h naught okay now we will talk about the analysis of one way anova so one way anova so when the overall f test is significant so if it is p value is saying that rejecting H0, that means it is a F test is a significant. So we are interested to know that which treatment means are diff different. Okay, so which treatment means are the different that you are looking. So you will do a multiple comparison procedure are used to answer such questions. And when we when pre-planned comparison are to be made, we use the contrast estimate statements while we will do a further analysis so how you can do uh, this uh, one way anova so let's say there are the three students marks is available so flavor one flavor two and flavor three so this is the basically the three class students uh, where we will uh, put forward the some ict uh, tools and we would like to see that what is the impact on their marks is okay so here you can get this anova table and this is your p value this is your f value and from here you can make the decisions so after this uh, now we will talk about the assumption of your distributions okay so your assumption is that your distribution should be normally distributed so how you can understand so if you will see the figure one so this is the uh, skew distribution so it's spread that much okay so this we can say that it is a not normal distribution but in figure two you can see that the distribution is symmetrical so this is the your symmetrical distribution okay so and this mu for mu one value and mu two are the symmetrical so here we can say that it is a normal distribution but unequal variances is there so you can see these widths so widths of mu one and mu two so this is the huge variation in this one, huge variation. So if it is, this is the larger than two groups, that means this is unequal variance. Then we will talk about the model assumptions. So model assumption are the mu one and mu two, so normal distribution and equal variances. So equal vari equality of the variance is the most important assumption in the ANOVA. If the variance are not equal, then statistics are not valid okay so we need to follow these assumptions so this is the the classical case where we you will see that it is the division is same and the variance is also equal so in that case we will try to go for the analysis of variance so equality of the variance is the most important assumption in anova 
if the variance are not equals then the statistics is not valid means if it is you not do not follow the assumptions might be your uh, results will be are wrong so what what you will do for model assumptions so obtain the standard residual recall that standard residual follow a standard normal distributions so check 68% of these standard residual between minus 1 to 1 95% should be in minus 2 to 2 and all them should be in between minus 3 to 3 so plot these standard residual for each treatment group to see if there is any funnel shape is not okay after that uh, if you will go ahead then if you will if the plots of the residual shows some concern then use the transformation on the data if the transformation does not take care of the problems then you can go for the residuals of the model based on the transform data does not seems to be acceptable then you can go for the non parametric one way analysis of variance that means you can go for the kruskal valley test so now this is the uh, parametric versus non parametric so you can also go for the parametric methods so far we discussed t test one sample t test pair t test and and here the non parametric means you will go for the wilcoxon rank sum wilcoxon sign sign rank test you can apply okay so if one or more of the uh, of the parametric assumption normality and equality of variance is violated then normality of the test of the uh, equality of these treatments means is more appropriate and simulation test suggests that the parametric anova is the fairly robust against the departure of the normality but not unequal variances in general the parametric anova is the preferred test is the most case when the data are continuous and the sample size are the small then uh, we will talk about the non parametric methods how you can go for the non parametric method so you can uh, it's applicable when the data is not normally distributed means when the group variance are unequal so here uh, in the uh, in the parametric method what we are we was doing we was comparing the mean values here you will be looking the central value that is you looking the median value so this is called the non parametric test compared to the uh, uh, compared to the t test okay so here my hypothesis is what median of one samples it is differ from the other samples and alternatively they are not equal okay so this is the initially non in null hypothesis they are equal in the alternative the median values are not equal so replace the data with their ranks another way is that you can also go for the ranks and then replace your data then kruskal valley test is non parametric overall test where we will analogous to this is the one way anova and here we will arrange the data in the rank wise and we will we will go for the sum of the ranks of these uh, these k k groups and then compare each rank to the overall mean rank value okay so this is kruskal valley non parametric overall test so this is the 12 over n of n n plus 1 summation of ni and this is the r i var and r var so these are the your calculated test statistics and compare the result with the value of the chi square distributions and a large chi square means that data do, do not support the null hypothesis so it's rejecting the null hypothesis kruskal valley test uh, here the test is based on the appropriate chi square test distributions and does not use any assumption about the distribution so non parametric will not require any assumptions more robust to the outlier if it is your data having the some outliers then you can go for the non parametric methods does not use all all of the information in the data so it is the less powerful than compared to the parametric methods so moderate sample size is usually needed for the more powerful test so this is the uh, 
the parametric versus non parametric so parametric is uh, is you already know that if it is your distribution distribution is normally distributed means the mean median value are the same that is means the it is the parametric distributions symmetrical that is means parametric distributions if it is the variance are equal for these two samples that means parametric samples non parametric means it is another counterparts where we will talk about the uh, we don't require any assumptions okay so that is the non parametric methods so if it is you don't require the any assumptions then you will go for the non parametric method so this is the t test for the two independent samples so if you will have the two independent samples then you will go for the t test and then we will cox and rank sum test if you will go for the will cox and rank sum and after that you will have pair t test okay so pair t test for that pair t test you can go for the will cox and sign rank test one way and over you can go for the crucial wally test okay so these are the other uh, test is available for you to to decide about the your which kind of the test you can go so it's depend on the your data so you can go for the parametric method you can go for non parametric methods you can go for chi square you can go for frequency tabulations you can go for data visualization and if you want to see the effect of the one variable on the other variable so that for that you can go for the regression analysis in the regression analysis you will find that lot of the other methods is available for the regression analysis that you can opt so you can talk about the logistic regressions once we will have uh, uh, you want to see the impact of the new medications on the the patient lives okay so is their lives or the patient is died okay so this is you would like to create a uh, you want to you want to develop a regression model that is the logistic regression model and you will see that what is the impact on the 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 death of these uh, the patients that you would like to see from the logistic regression if you will talk about the uh, a single regression analysis so in the single regression analysis so if it is uh, this is the the overview which we we given about the parametric non parametric regression analysis if you would like to go for uh, if you will have many variables which is coming out from the any experiment and you would like to go for the factor analysis so you would like to see which factor is more important for an analysis then you can go for the um, conformity factor analysis or you you can go for the exploratory factor analysis so these are the option is available for you to to make your analysis so i think uh, here i will be uh, saying that this is uh, just an overview and after that you can just go one by one uh, um, sections and then after that you will you can more explore about that how you can use and how you can implement to the some of the software which is available uh, which are available like uh, spss stata and the r these are the very commonly used